Hi, Douglas Simonson here coming to you from Mexico with another time-lapse video where I create a painting from start to finish. Today I'm going to be doing a portrait. Today's painting is a portrait from a series I did recently called Future Husbands. These are usually based on photos I find online of somebody I thought was hot, basically an online crush. In this case, that someone was Chris Petrovsky, the actor who played Dimitri in the American television series Madam Secretary. This is the photo that I worked from. You can see there are two versions here. That's because one is the original and one is the tweaked version. You probably already know that I usually tweak whatever photo I'm going to work from in Photoshop to make it easier to work from. And you can find out more about that by checking out my video on this YouTube channel using Photoshop to make photos easier to paint from. The photograph is basically just a starting point. I then do a lot of drawing and basically reinvent the face in my own particular expressionist style, or what I call expressionist. Then when I'm happy with it, I transfer the drawing to canvas to turn into a painting. Next I go over all the lines in the drawing with black paint. Sometimes I paint more or less realistically and sometimes I paint more expressionistically, like this time. And when I do that, I really like lines. It's fun to see what happens when I start applying paint to the line drawing. Once the black paint is dry, I cover everything with an acrylic wash. This is my standard practice and I usually use a mix of dioxazine purple and burnt umber and that's what I'm using here. I find it's much easier to see how the color relationships are actually working in the painting as you go along if you're not painting on a blinding white canvas. Painting on a darker, more neutral background just helps you see how the colors are working together. Now I'm starting to actually put in colors. I don't always start with the background, it just depends on what my mood is that day. And uh, I also don't remember why I chose green. But once I got some green in, then I started putting in some flesh tones and then I can start to get a sense of how the colors are working together. The flesh tones are interesting. There are lots of ways that you can mix them. I usually use alizarin crimson and yellow oxide and a bit of ultramarine blue and then some white. But uh, burnt sienna and white can make a nice flesh tone too. There are lots of ways to mix it. But what I do basically is mix three values, a light, a dark, and a medium, and then just start putting them on the canvas because you never know what's going to work until you actually start putting it on the painting. Once I do that and I get those flesh tones on there, then I can see what I'm missing and mix that up. And uh, it's really very dynamic. You never know what you're going to need until you actually start putting it on the canvas. One thing that always works for me is to mix warm and cool. That's why you'll see some cool gray popping up in the warm flesh tones of the face. So as I've indicated, I'm noticing what colors are working and what colors aren't. But that's really secondary to what's going on here. The values are what I'm really paying attention to. And by values, I mean the lights and darks. Basically, you can have the most beautiful flesh tone imaginable, but if it's too dark or too light for where you're putting it, it will not work. The lights and the darks, the values, have to be right. The values are what make the whole thing look like shapes with light hitting them. Your colors can be all wrong and if the values are right, it will still work. On the other hand, if your values are not right, it doesn't matter how great your colors are, your painting will not work. To make sure the values are right, I'm referring to my source photo a lot, both the original and the tweaked version. By the way, the other photos you see tacked up are scans of some of my own older paintings. These are paintings I chose because they're really loose and have a lot of energy and I really like them. That's something I'm always aiming for but only actually achieve a small percentage of the time. So I put up images of my, what I think are my greatest successes to give me something to aim for with this painting. As I work, I'm stopping and stepping back a lot, getting distance from the painting. And I'm also squinting a lot. This is so I can fuzz out the details and get a better idea of how the overall image is working. Like, is this guy coming to life? Do I feel a personality? Is the expression working? 
I can change a lot with a little light here or a little dark there. So I'm experimenting as I go, trying stuff, and then stepping back and squinting to see how it worked. The stuff that works, I keep. The stuff that doesn't work, I try something else. This is a good summary of how I paint. When the face is more or less working, then I turn to the shirt and the background. This is pretty easy stuff compared to the face, but it still needs to be right. Again, the values are more important than the color. Once the shirt and background are more complete, I go back to the face and now I'm just refining it. Basically, I just want to make him as sexy, handsome, and charismatic as I possibly can. And if there's a bit of mystery in his expression, so much the better. This is what I'm going for anyway. Once I'm satisfied with that, I finish the background and voila, future husband number four. And this is the final painting, Future Husband Number 4. You can see it on my website at douglassimonson.com. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint today. If you did like it, hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. I'm always making new paintings, which means I'm always making new videos. So if you did like today's painting and you got a little inspired, go! Put on your painting clothes, get out your paints, and go paint!